Hey guys, this is Payesh from Vivoom.com and if I had to pick the most exciting gaming phones out there, it has to be the ROG Phone series. Well, the brand new ROG Phone 3 is here and like the previous two ROG phones, it packs in some fantastic gaming features, it's power packed and well, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. First up, in typical first impressions custom, let's see what's in the box. Okay, so you get this cool case and I really like it because I hate those transparent silicon cases. There's the 30 watt hypercharger adapter, the USB-C to C cable, a 3.5 mm to USB-C dongle, and obviously this, the new ROG Phone 3. Now design wise, let me be frank, the ROG Phone 3 is very similar to the ROG Phone 2 if you just look at it. I mean, it's still a big and hefty phone at 240 grams and that's justified because this way it's still compatible with all the accessories from last year and this way it still packs in all of the crazy ROG Phone tech. Having said that, it does have some functional changes. First, as you can see, the ROG Phone 3 has slightly different patterns on the back, but it still has the gaming phone vibe with the ROG logo that lights up, so it's all cool. You still get the two USB-C ports, one on the side and one on the bottom, but this time, there's no headphone jack. Yep, that's the reason the phone has the dongle bundled in the box. Anyway, on the right, you have these air triggers, and these are air triggers 3, and they are much better. See, in the ROG Phone 1 and 2, these ultrasonic buttons worked as two usual shoulder buttons with tap and slide functions, but in ROG Phone 3, it's way more functional and you can use it for five more actions. Let me show you. So I'm in the PUBG Mobile's controls page, so I can just bring up the air triggers function like this. And as you can see, there's now an option to divide these two buttons into four buttons. So they can work as L1, L2, R1, R2. That's all, there's also swipe functionality on these buttons so you can swipe left or right to trigger different touch points. Lastly, there's a new motion control feature where you can shake the phone like this to trigger a screen touch. As you can see, I have set it to reload my gun in the game and I think it's awesome. Apart from that, you can also use these triggers as usual shoulder buttons and with the feedback and everything, it works really well. This is definitely my new go-to PUBG mobile phone and I'm going to try out different control combos in these air triggers to see what works best. And if you have any suggestions on that, make sure to comment below. Moving to the front, it's similar to with the dual front firing speakers, which by the way are even better now because this time there's a seven magnet stereo speaker. And in my brief time with the phone, the speakers have more depth, more bass. The audio experience is just super impressive. There's also a new audio wizard feature with different profiles tuned by Dirac. Anyway, the big change on the front is the display. This is a 6.5 inch FHD plus AMOLED panel with HDR10 plus support, Gorilla Glass 6. But the highlight is the fact that this is an insanely fast 144 Hertz display with 270 Hertz touch sampling rate and everything else has been improved too, be it the touch latency or the slide latency. Now, this is my first time using a 144 Hertz panel on a smartphone and it's a beautiful experience. Trust me, you have to use it to believe it. The UI here is just crazy smooth. I mean, I'm sure Asus has optimized the UI for the 144Hz refresh rate because the phone seems crazy responsive and every animation is just buttery smooth and you can feel it. Now, to be honest, 144Hz is probably overkill because popular games like PUBG Mobile, Asphalt or COD Mobile don't support it. But interestingly, Asus sent us a list of more than 100 games that support the 144Hz refresh rate including some popular games like Altos Adventure, Beach Buggy Racing, Modern Combat, Shadowgun Legends, Dead Trigger 2 and more. You can check out the full list from our article in the link below. Now I did play some Beach Buggy Racing and Altos Adventure on the ROG Phone 3 and well the gameplay was smooth and the game looked beautiful on the screen. So yeah, at least the 144Hz display is fun when the game is supported. Either ways, like I said, I'm sure popular games aren't supported yet. So in that case, there is an option to conserve battery life by setting the refresh rate to auto, 60, 90 or even 120. As for the quality of the AMOLED panel, it does seem great with very accurate color rendering and it's very bright so I'm positive. Apart from that, you still get all the tech here like the 4 Wi-Fi antennas, 4 microphones with noise cancellation, the GameCool 3 heat dissipation system which is said to have a 6 times larger heat sink, redesigned copper 3D vapor chamber and a larger graphite film. Well, I'll definitely be putting the cooling system to test here in the next few days. Oh, and yes, it also has this notification LED which is very rare these days and I love it. Moving on to the under the hood hardware, the ROG Phone 3 is quite possibly the most powerful Android flagship right now. Just look at the specs. So it's got the updated Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset up to 12 GB of LPDDR5 RAM, 
and up to 256 GB of UFS 3.1 storage, all top of the line specs. Now, if you're wondering what does the 865 Plus bring versus the 865, well, let me just show you. So the Snapdragon 865 Plus' Cryo 585 CPU can boost up to a maximum of 3.1 GHz clock speed, compared to 2.8 GHz on the regular 865. The CPU too has been overclocked. The Adreno 650 GPU has 10% faster rendering in the 865 Plus. Apart from that, the 865 Plus has the more updated standards like Wi-Fi 6E compared to Wi-Fi 6 on the 865 and Bluetooth 5.2 compared to Bluetooth 5.1. Well, that's pretty much all the difference between the 865 Plus and 865. And I know, to be honest, it's not a big deal as everyone makes it out to be. But yeah, it's the new cutting edge platform, so it's good to have on the ROG Phone 3. Now, we aren't allowed to show you any benchmarks just yet or do any comparisons, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. As for PUBG Mobile's graphics options, the A65 Plus supports a maximum setting of HDR graphics and extreme frame rates. And at this setting too, the game runs smooth and nice. As for the software on board, the phone has Android 10 here. And other than the optional ROG theme, the UI and apps are mostly from stock Android. And I love the fact that there's absolutely no bloatware whatsoever. Asus does add handy features like auto dark mode, support, different tools like twin apps, a one hand mode, a screen recorder and more, but that's pretty much it. Plus there's the amazing Armory Crate app where you can see the GPU and CPU speed, the temperature of the device and more while the X mode, the performance boosting mode is turned on. And you can also customize different things including the air triggers, game genie, the auto lighting on the back of the phone and more. Moving on, when it comes to the battery, the ROG Phone 3 keeps the massive 6000 mAh battery, which is awesome. And the good news is that the phone will come with a 30 watt hypercharger in the box with every single variant. Now I'm honestly positive about the charging and the battery performance of the ROG Phone 3, but what's also exciting are the advanced battery customization features in the software. As you can see, there are different battery modes here and you can create a custom battery saving profile. There are also new battery saving options where you can stop unnecessary apps, deny apps from auto starting and hibernate apps. There's also battery care where you can turn on slow charging or schedule charging at night so the battery span is longer. These are pretty interesting features I think. Next up I want to talk about the cameras. Now I know the cameras are never the highlight in ROG phones because these are proper gaming phones but hey the ROG phone 3 brings an upgraded camera setup that sounds pretty capable on paper. Well, it's a triple camera setup, including the 64 megapixel Sony IMX686 sensor, a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 5 megapixel macro lens. The cameras here are also pretty exciting on the video front because the ROG Phone 3 has support for 8K video recording. Yes, 8K support is here and there's a pro video mode as well that I'm going to test out. Coming to the pricing now, the ROG Phone 2 last year launched at a crazy good price. But with the GST increase, the cost of the 865 plus with 5G, I'm not expecting the ROG Phone 3 to be priced as low as the ROG Phone 2. In fact, if you ask me, I think it should be somewhere around 45 to 50,000 rupees, considering all of the top of the line specs and features the phone comes with. And even though it's too early to judge, at that price too, I think the phone could be an interesting flagship phone. Yes, the gaming phone is not for everyone, especially because of its beastly look and feel, and I'm yet to truly test this phone extensively. But if you're excited for the ROG Phone 1 and 2, like me, you'll find the ROG Phone 3 exciting as well. Well, those are my first thoughts on the new ROG Phone 3. And if you're wondering about all the accessories that you get, like the cooler fan, the twin dock, well, those accessories have been updated too. So check out all the details from the link in the description down below. Also, what do you think of the new ROG Phone 3? Tell us in the comments down below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to share it with your friends who have been waiting for the ROG Phone 3. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.